Hi, welcome back to Avocet Math. In this video we're going to do a series recap of the Diophantine equation methods and techniques that we've developed over the last uh, dozen or so videos. So uh, let's uh, review some of the methods that we've come across. Our first and foremost and favorite method, of course, is the method of uh, compare factors. This method is sometimes uh, referred to as the decomposition method. And a typical example of this method is uh, an equation of the form, for example, x squared minus y squared equals 52. And as we've seen uh, in our videos, we want to uh, take advantage of any factoring opportunity. We certainly see an opportunity to factor x squared minus y squared into x minus y times x plus y. We decompose the number 52 into its constituent prime factors, 2 times 2 times 13. And we notice from our analysis that uh, this factor pair has to be of uh, same parity. It can either be even, even, or odd, odd. There's no way to satisfy odd, odd with the even numbers on the right side of the equation. So the parity pattern has to be even times an even. And in order to accomplish that, there's really only one way to break up this factor group into two even numbers. That has to be, of course, 2 times 26. And from that, we can assign 2 to x minus y, 26 to x plus y, to find out that uh, x is equal to 14 and y is equal to 2, I'm sorry, 12. So again, that's our first and foremost technique. That's probably the one that encompasses probably 80% of the types of integer equations that you're going to encounter in the AMC and AIM. Uh, the second method that we've uh, discussed is the method of uh, linear uh, two variable. And this is an example of something that's called the parametric method for reasons that uh, I'll explain in a minute. And one of the uh, simple examples of this is an equation of the type, for instance, uh, 7x plus uh, 2y is equal to 23. And uh, we found from our, our methods that we discussed that we can uh, form a solution to this equation uh, by representing x and y in terms of some other parameter, uh, say n. And we can find that, for instance, x is equal to uh, in this case, 2 times some integer parameter n. Uh, y is equal to minus 7 times that integer parameter n. And then we have to add uh, a specific solution to this equation, to these two equations. Uh, I see x equal 3 and y equals 1 is a specific uh, solution to this equation. So let's add 3 plus 1, where n is uh, an element of uh, integers. So we call this the parameter or parametric method because instead of representing x in terms of y or y in terms of x, we can represent these variables in terms of some third uh, variable, which is often called a parameter. And then these equations are often called parametric equations, and thus the name the parametric method. Uh, in general, there are much more complicated parametric equations that you can conceive of. But again, for our purposes, we're generally dealing with linear two-variable equations. And the type of parameter equations that we need to work with are of the kind that you see here to the right. And this uh, probably accounts for perhaps 20% of the uh, types of uh, questions that you'll encounter on the AMC and AIM. And this uh, grouping here accounts for almost all of the videos that we've discussed to date. And uh, if you uh, master these two methods, that's pretty much all you'll need to do to uh, perform quite well on the AMC and AIM. But in this uh, series recap, I just want to look at this in a slightly broader context and mention a few other methods that uh, you may want to be aware of. Uh, one of the methods that uh, is sometimes uh, encountered uh, is the method of inequalities. And let me just list these methods, and I'll go ahead and try to describe them briefly. Uh, another method that uh, you sometimes come across is a method of uh, mathematical induction. 
Uh, another method is uh, modular arithmetic. And let's see, a final method that I want to mention is, is a method called uh, infinite descent. And briefly, uh, the inequality method is, is actually quite interesting. Um, let me just draw this over here. Uh, you know, in general, when you're trying to solve for a Diophantine equation, uh, you may be solving for x and y uh, in, the, in the plane of positive integers. And basically, that amounts to the notion that uh, you're trying to solve for some set of lattice points in the xy plane. So you can sort of view your potential solution set as being a grid of points in the xy plane. And uh, in principle, this is an infinite plane, of course. And so there are an infinite number of possible solutions. And if you were to uh, manipulate the equations at hand in such a way that you could come up with an inequality, an inequality, for example, that, for instance, x squared plus y squared is less than 20, then you will have gone a long way to solving any type of Diophantine equation because an inequality such as this such as this basically tells you that the solutions have to lie on a circle or inside a circle of radius square root of 20 and that's a rather restrictive circle and that would limit in this case your potential solution set to roughly a dozen different solutions and at that point you've essentially solved the uh, the uh, the Alphantine equation, because you can go through these points one, at a, one by one and determine which ones are valid solutions and which ones are not. So that's just sort of a hint of how we would use inequalities to help solve a Diophantine equation. The induction method refers to uh, uh, kind of a generalization of the parametric method, where instead of writing x and y in terms of n, we write the equations or we write the uh, solutions for uh, for generating uh, xn and yn in terms of the prior xn and yn. So essentially we take a solution that we know to be true to generate the next solution that we can then prove to be true. And by process of repeating this, we can then generate an entire solution set. Uh, the modular arithmetic, I think I mentioned that briefly before, this pertains to uh, the notion of trying to analyze numbers in terms of their remainders upon division by various other numbers. And again, that's, that's something that uh, is not usually encountered in the AMC and AIM, but uh, I, I should say it does actually creep into a few AIM problems here and there, so something we should be aware of. Uh, and then the last one is called the infinite descent, which I'll describe in a minute here. But I just wanted to mention that these last two methods are primar primarily designed for proving that there are no solutions available and so that's why they're not typically used in, in anything having to do with the AMC and the AIM, because you're typically trying to find uh, some, some type or number of solutions. You're not trying to just determine that there are no solutions. And this method of into infinite descent is kind of interesting. It's actually a method that was first uh, developed by uh, Pierre Fermat from, from France, uh, kind of the author of the, the famous uh, Fermat's last theorem, that x to the n plus uh, y to the n cannot equal z to the n for n greater than or equal to 3. And uh, he actually proved this for, I believe, n equals 3 and n equals 4. And he used kind of a very clever method, uh, what we call infinite descent. And uh, I just wanted to point that out. So as I mentioned, these uh, last few techniques are really the, the kind of the, the, the area of, of types of, of problems that you would encounter in, say, the, the BAMO or the US ammo type level of testing, with the exception perhaps of modular arithmetic, which does show up occasionally on the AIM. Uh, and I just wanted to give you a little flavor for this, so as a, as a final send off, I'll, I'll leave you with a uh, final problem set that uh, shows some of these techniques in action. And again, I don't include them to, uh, to suggest that these are things that you need to learn for anything having to do with the AMC and the AIM, but I just wanted to include them briefly just to, to give you a little flavor for what those might be like. So with that, uh, let me leave you with this final problem set and just congratulate you on uh, getting this far. If you've 
grown accustomed to these two methods above, then uh, I think you've done quite well in, in, in furthering your, your knowledge of this, this topic, and congratulations for that. So uh, I give you hats off, and uh, that's my, my sort of informal uh, graduation ceremony. So good luck with this, and we'll take care. Bye-bye.